When the 2023 Formula One season kicks off in March, 22-year-old American racing driver Logan Sargent will become the first driver from the United States to compete in a Formula One Grand Prix since 2015, when American Alexander Rossi competed in five mildly depressing races for the now defunct Manor Marussia F1 team. Sargent was announced as Williams' 2023 replacement for the departing Nicholas Latifi, who was moving on to graze in a goat pasture, on October 22nd, 2022. Now, the funny thing about that announcement is that it was made before Logan Sargent was even eligible to compete in Formula One, a truly bizarre situation that I'll get to here in a minute as I tell the story of Logan Sargent's improbable rise to becoming a Formula One racing driver. I'm J-Bone, and this is Formula Bone. J-Bone! Let's do a quick look into the past to see exactly what it means to finally have an American driver back on the Formula One grid. Formula One is largely viewed as a European sport, but the United States has a storied track record of success in the global motorsport series. As of early 2023, the title of Formula One World Drivers Champion has been awarded 73 times to 34 different drivers. And of those 34 F1 champions, two have driven under the American flag. America's first World Drivers Champion was Florida-born Phil Hill, who captured the 1961 title in unimaginable circumstances that I will be covering in a future upload, so make sure you subscribe to Formula Bone. And America's second World Drivers Champion was Italian-born Mario Andretti, who moved to the United States at the age of 15, became a U.S. citizen at the age of 24, and won the 1978 Formula One World Drivers Championship at the age of 38. The United States' two World Drivers Championships ranks 10th all-time with regard to F1 championships by country, tied with European motorsport powerhouses the Netherlands and Spain, and the U.S., is one of just eight countries with multiple World Drivers Champions. And not to mention that of the 772 drivers who have ever started a Formula One Grand Prix, over 20% of them have been American drivers. Now, sure, that's only because the Indy 500 was included on the F1 calendar from 1950 through 1960, and those fields were absolutely stuffed to the gills with American drivers, but it's still factual. Despite all this historical American prominence in Formula One, shockingly, only five American drivers have been on the grid in the 40 seasons from when Mario Andretti left Formula One at the end of the 1982 season through the 2022 season. Those five drivers were Eddie Cheever, Danny Sullivan, Mario Andretti's son Michael Andretti, Scott Speed, and the aforementioned Alexander Rossi. Only two of these five careers are particularly notable, that of Cheever, who had nine podiums and 70 world championship points in his career and who holds the record for the most F1 race starts for an American driver, and that of Michael Andretti, who partnered Ayrton Senna at McLaren and podiumed at the 1993 Italian Grand Prix in what ended up being the final race of his only season in Formula One. After this race, Andretti was replaced mid-season with Mika Hakkinen after Andretti and McLaren mutually agreed on Andretti leaving the team. This lack of American drivers in Formula One for the past 40 years has not been due to a lack of talent, quite the opposite, in fact. Obvious Eurocentrism in F1 aside, most people attribute the lack of American drivers in Formula One to the existence of the IndyCar series in the United States. Like Formula One, IndyCar is a single-seat open-wheel racing series and it's been running in America in some capacity since 1920, with its premier event being the legendary Indy 500, which has been held since 1911 and makes up one-third of the prestigious Triple Crown of Motorsport racing trifecta, along with the Monaco Grand Prix and 24 Hours of Le Mans. Due to its location within and prestigious reputation throughout the United States, as well as its larger grid size and lower financial barrier to entry, IndyCar has long been seen as a more enticing option for talented American racing drivers who don't want to leave the country and also spend a ton of extra money for a shot at a spot on the Formula One grid that they probably won't ever get anyways. And all that brings us to Logan Sargent, the man who's managed to break the mold and get the stars and stripes of the United States back on the Formula One grid for the first time since 2015 and for the first time in a presumably full-time capacity since Scott Speed's 2006 campaign that was completely devoid of points. 
If only Speed were his middle name instead of his last name. Born in Southeast Florida, just like 1961's American F1 world champion Phil Hill, just saying, Logan Sargent began his motorsport career in karting in 2008 at the age of seven. And here is your bizarre Formula One fact of the day. Logan Sargent started karting one year before Nicholas Latifi did, despite Latifi being five and a half years older than Sargent. This is because while Logan started karting at the age of seven, which is normal for many F1 drivers, Latifi started karting at the age of 13, which is normal for many billionaire sons. Logan's karting career was quite successful and culminated in two huge wins for him. Most notably, Sargent was the CIK FIA Junior Karting World Champion in 2015, which is a huge deal. Past winners of this title include Charles Leclerc, Alex Albon, and Fernando Alonso, and in winning this title, Sargent became just the second American to ever win a karting world championship, joining Lake Speed, who won the 1978 FIA Karting World Championship. Logan then followed up his 2015 CIK FIA Junior Karting World Championship by winning the 2016 WSK Champions Cup. 2016 was also the year Logan graduated from karting to formula racing. The first formula series in which Logan competed was the 2016-17 Formula 4 UAE Championship, which featured strong competition from the likes of Oscar Piastri, David Malukas, and Jonathan Aberdeen. Logan began his formula career by finishing second in this series behind Aberdeen. That's not necessarily as impressive an achievement as it sounds, considering only five of these series' 15 drivers actually competed in all 18 races, but it is still quite impressive when you consider the fact that Logan finished on the podium of every single race aside from the three from which he retired a promising start to his young career. Now, before we get to 2017, breaking news, Formula Bone fans, I just launched my new Patreon page, patreon.com slash Formula Bone, where you can go right now to get even more Formula Bone content every single week for the rest of your life. For just $5 a month, which is less than the cost of just one fancy coffee drink each month, here are all the incredible perks you'll receive that far exceed $5 a month in value. You'll get two Patreon-exclusive Formula Bone uploads per month that will only ever be available on Patreon, Topics will include my takes on the biggest F1 news stories, behind the scenes content, and more. You'll gain access to my weekly F1 Bone Zone column available only on Patreon, which I promise will be the spiciest F1 content you read each and every week. I made the first edition of the F1 Bone Zone available for free for a limited time to convince you to join the Patreon, so go check that out now. You'll also get 10% off everything in the Formula Bone shop, and you'll have a special Formula Bone patron Discord role bestowed upon you that will give you access to patron-only text and voice channels. Additionally, if you want me to shout your name out, I've got you covered. Just check out my $10 and $30 Patreon tiers. I hope to see you on patreon.com slash Formula Bones soon. j -Bone! In 2017, Logan competed in a number of different Formula series and achieved his first victory in Formula Racing by winning the third race of the third round of the VDV Challenge Monoplace held at Circuit Paul Ricard on May 28th, 2017. Logan's main focus in 2017, however, was the F4 British Championship, in which he competed against Oscar Piastri again, as well as drivers such as Jamie Caroline and Ollie Caldwell. Logan added two more victories here, one at Rockingham Motor Speedway and one at Silverstone, and finished the 2017 F4 British Championship in third place behind Jamie Caroline and Oscar Piastri. In 2018, Logan competed in every round of both the Formula Renault Euro Cup and the Formula Renault Northern European Cup, adding four more race wins to his resume on his way to finishing fourth and fifth in these series, respectively. Competitors across these two series included Oscar Piastri, again, and everyone's favorite F1 esports driver, Jarno Otmir. In 2019, Sargent made his way further up the Formula Racing ladder by graduating to competition in the FIA Formula 3 Championship. However, Sargent's 2019 F3 campaign definitely did not go how he would have liked, as he only registered four points finishes across the campaign's 16 races on his way to finishing the season 19th out of 34 drivers. Logan's 2019 wasn't all bad, though, as he did finish P3 at the competitive non-championship F3 Macau Grand Prix, earning Logan his first Formula 3 podium. In 2020, though, Logan Sargent absolutely excelled. His sole focus was F3 that year, and it showed. 
Logan achieved three pole positions and six podiums with two wins in the 18 race season. And he was involved in a three-way title fight with Oscar Piastri and Teo Porcher that came down to the very last race of the season. Sargent, unfortunately, was involved in a crash on the first lap of this race, however, ending his title bid. He ended up finishing the season in third place, just one point behind Porsche and just four points behind champion Piastri. It's at this point that Logan Sargent's career hits a brief roadblock. Rather than moving up to FIA Formula 2, as many predicted he would given his impressive 2020 Formula 3 campaign, Logan decided to remain in F3, citing budget concerns. In an interview with Chris Medland for Racer, Sargent said, quote, F2 is definitely ruled out for 2021. The problem with F2 is the funding for it is very high, as we know. I know they were saying that with the reduced rounds, it would come down, but if anything, I think it has actually gone up a little bit, so that's made it really difficult, end quote. Side note, it's super interesting to look back now on the first sentence of this article, which is, quote, Logan Sargent will not step up to Formula 2 this season and is unlikely to remain on the FIA path to Formula 1 due to the budget required for 2021. End quote. While Logan did, in fact, not step up to Formula 2 in 2021, he did end up remaining on the FIA path to Formula 1 by remaining in Formula 3 for a third season. The 2021 F3 season didn't go as well for Sargent as his 2020 campaign did, but he still finished the season with four podiums that included one win on his way to seventh place. But Logan's 2021 was not over just yet, not by a long shot. On October 22nd, 2021, Logan's life changed forever when it was announced that he had joined Williams's Driver Academy as part of a long-term agreement. About his signing, Sargent said, quote, I am delighted to be joining the Williams Racing Driver Academy. It's a team with not only a fantastic history, but a great track record of bringing young talent into Formula One. I am really excited to begin working with the team and can't wait to hit the ground running, end quote. And hit the ground running, he did. Not long after being added to the Williams Academy roster, Logan was called up to compete in Formula 2 for the first time for HWA Race Lab over the course of three races in Saudi Arabia. This brief F2 stint did not actually go very well at all for Logan, and it included a crash. However, you can't really fault Logan's performance here as he was driving a car he was quite unfamiliar with, on an incredibly fast, narrow, and tricky Jetta Corniche circuit. And fortunately for Logan, F2 teams did not seem to fault him because he proceeded to move on up to F2 for 2022. Which brings us to 2022, inarguably the biggest year of Logan Sargent's life. He competed in FIA Formula 2 for Carlin and had a phenomenal rookie F2 season. Logan became the first American to win an F2 race when he won the Silverstone feature race, and he'd win again two races later after finishing third at the Red Bull Ring feature race, and then having P1 and P2 both get disqualified after the race. Logan was never really in the running to win the F2 title, as Felipe Drugovich absolutely ran away with it all season long and was actually able to clinch the title with three races remaining. But it was not the F2 title that Logan really cared about, because it's time to go full circle and discuss October 22nd, 2022, when Williams announced that Logan Sargent would be their driver for 2023. Like I said at the beginning of the video, at the time Williams announced Logan as their driver, he was not yet eligible to even compete in Formula One. This is because you need to have a minimum of 40 points on your FIA super license in order to compete in Formula One, and Logan had not amassed that many points yet. Whether or not Logan would get to 40 points before the 2023 season hinged on the results of the final two F2 races, both in Abu Dhabi to be held a little less than a month after Williams's announcement. Logan was P3 in the F2 standings heading into those final two races and had to finish the F2 season at or higher than P5 or P6 in the standings, the latter only applying if Logan didn't get any penalty points in Abu Dhabi, to secure enough points to earn his super license. And with all that pressure sitting on him and eating at him for almost a month, Logan went into the Abu Dhabi race weekend and did exactly what he needed to, not choke. Logan ended up finishing the F2 season in fourth place, securing his super license and his seat in Formula One, and earning the Formula 2 Antoine Hubert Award for Rookie of the Year in the process. Fun fact, every driver to ever win the Antoine Hubert Award for Rookie of the Year in Formula 2 is currently 
In Formula One, Logan Sargent was officially announced as Williams' second 2023 driver on November 21st, 2022, meaning an American driver is finally back on the Formula One grid. So there you have it. That's how Logan Sargent became America's Formula One driver. If you enjoyed that content and want to support Formula Bone so that I can keep making Formula One content full-time, the most mutually beneficial way that you can do that is by subscribing to my completely new Patreon page, where just $5 per month gets you two additional Patreon-exclusive uploads per month, access to my weekly written F1 column, Discord perks, and more. Go check that out right now at patreon.com slash formulabone. Until next time, folks, J-Bone!